is Sakai Founder, Sakai Producers, and we're back with another video. Today, we're finally getting to the paintings, the time lapses of these paintings, and explaining basically how I did that series of 15 paintings that tell a consecutive story. Now, it took a minute to actually get to this, but I am very happy to actually say that we're finally here. There will be three parts to this video basically explaining all the different types of ways I did each painting and through these paintings and stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoy this basically talk and time lapse of art and, you know, basically process of watching me do this. So I thank you guys. And honestly, you know, watch the whole video through, like, comment, and subscribe. You know, the regular old stuff. Feel what I'm saying? I thank you for viewing and watching. Peace out. Let's get to it. So the first part is sketching. The sketch is always just putting shapes together and getting an understanding for what you want. This is the part where you find those references and you get an understanding of what colors, what tone, what mood you're trying to convey, and everything of this nature. As you see in these two pieces right here, both of them are totally different, but both of them are conveying a different part of this man's life. And the first one, as you see on the left side, you see where he got the shovel in his hand and he's digging and burying dead bodies. And the mood is trying to convey is a dark mood. So the colors are going to be cool and everything of that nature. But on the other hand, which the sketch has ended, it's the opposite. This man is standing over. He's, he's not broken no more. He's fixed. So, you know, in the sketch is where you truly build the story of a painting. And the story of a painting can always go into building the film and building things that's even bigger than that. And next we go into blocking and detailing. And blocking and detailing, this is the process where you see colors start to form. Colors start to differentiate between the foreground, the background, and the ground closest to you. Yeah. yeah. And this is where you start to use the references even more for reference, as you see, as the skies, the skies in the background. You know, skies is something that you look at every day, but you don't really understand the forms of it until you truly sit down and look at it. So I found a picture on Google of the type of sky that I kind of had in my mind, and I started to do off of that. But this is also another reason why when you have a camera or anything of that nature, go out and take pictures. When you see something beautiful that catches your eye, take something, take pictures so that when you have the chance to express yourself inside of a painting or inside of art or anything of that nature, you can do it because you get you saw this and you got your own pictures and everything of that nature that you can build up off of you got your own references to build up off of and you really having that full creative process like sometimes i'll just walk and i will paint and i'll just draw what i see and this helps me get an understanding for shapes as i'm doing right here i'm drawing Partly what I see, but also what I want to see. So what I want to see is what I'm changing. And what I see is what I'm keeping. What I want to what I want to see and what I see is what I'm keeping. So I'm basically working between the reference and my own mind to find out what colors, what is going to push the picture the most. What darks is going to look better. What lights is going to look better. What What's going to gravitate the most. And that's that's the process you see.
And this brings us into the final part, final layers. And this is where you're doing those finished tick touches, adding the blood splatters, adding the lights, the darks. And this is where you're emphasizing the lights with screen layers, with overlay layers, and everything of that nature because with overlay layers you can move things darker and make a darker tone and make a more grittier tone of a picture and also add that extra oomph to the bright parts and with a screen layer you can really push the brights very far push the brights very far but you have to lay that foundation before when you're painting but when you get to this part, this is where you're basically adding those finishing touches, those final details that make it stand out. And those blood splatters, I like to add those as a screen layer, as a part of a screen layer and a regular layer so I can mix them together to kind of make certain parts brighter and certain parts darker because what I want to stand out is the gruesomeness. The gruesomeness of when you're falling in the sin and you're in that dark place and when you're going into all these things that you're not supposed to be going into so you know that's the parts that i want to show in my art and you know this is um inspired by gary vashio i hope i'm saying his name right but he made this piece which i'm not going to show on here because yeah but he made this piece that is very similar to this. And this piece was like you see the person cutting the person's head off. And it kind of reminded me of this piece. And this piece was kind of inspired, but not fully inspired by that piece. There's still parts that, you know, is separate and it's telling a whole different story. It's just like I knew what I wanted this piece to look like and it came out pretty nice. And again, guys, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned because there is another video on the way that's talking about the deeper meaning of an explanation of these paintings. And there will also be a book coming out about the character that this painting is talking about. So thank you. Peace out.